Hello everyone, I'm back in Japan after two years of staying in the Philippines. One of my favorite places to come back to is Dotonbori in Osaka. It's the beating heart of Osaka and a major feast for your senses. From being a neon lights wonderland to mouth-watering street food, you can't help but be infected with their vibrant Osaka energy. In this video, I will share to you my mini adventures, my favorite spots and moments, and I'll include a food guide as well. I hope this will be helpful to other DIY travelers. I landed at Kansai International Airport and it was so late by the time we arrived. I wasn't able to pick up my Wi-Fi at the airport because the shop closed at 9 and it was past 10 when we got there. Good thing I can still use the airport Wi-Fi to contact Gail who was gonna meet me at one of the subway stations. So imagine doing that without internet. I rode the airport bus to Osaka station for 1,600 yen because it was the first thing that greeted me at the exit. You, however, have another option which is the Osaka loop train for 1,200 yen only, which is cheaper than the airport bus. So I arrived at Osaka station and I got lost as I tried to find my way to our meeting place which was the Higashi Meta station. Good thing a random Japanese just appeared out of nowhere and helped me to get to such station where I reunited with Gail after almost two years of not seeing each other. The last time we saw each other in person was September 2022 on her birth month when I flew to Cebu for the weekend just to hang out with her. Yes, she's that special, my OG travel buddy. So fast forward, we went to her apartment and I got my welcome gift. She's as sweet as ever. I still remember seeing random snacks on my doorknob when we were still neighbors in Hamamatsu City. So the welcome gift was a box of beautiful pastries that I don't even know what to call, but they sure are tasty and my favorite is the brown one. I was so so happy because I felt like I was 25 years old again, back when we first hang out and had sleepovers at our Leo Palace apartments. The next day, I did some shopping because my clothes weren't winter ready. And as someone who always prefers to be practical when it comes to clothes, I shopped at Second Street. For those who don't know, it's a famous second-hand shop in Japan with lots of branches nationwide. You can find a lot of cool stuff there for a very affordable price. So I bought a couple of thick jackets for the winter because I only brought a thin blue windbreaker jacket from the Philippines. Then I had lunch at Sukiya which used to be one of my affordable favorites. I miss their cheap gyudon so much. I wanted to create one in the Philippines but failed. On my way to Gail's apartment, I got lost. As in, I mistakenly took the wrong bus, so instead of a 20 minute travel, it turned into almost 2 hours. So, be careful in riding buses guys, make sure you're getting on it from the correct side of the road or else you will reach a different destination. And that night was our schedule for a street food night in Dotonbori. Good thing there's Gale so I didn't have to worry about getting lost in the challenging Osaka subway stations. I didn't have a chance to live in Osaka, so I was still fascinated with everything it can offer, even if I've been there thrice. It still always feels like the first. So we walked around and enjoyed the beautiful neon lights, and I was very excited to eat. The first thing that I wanted to eat was takoyaki. So we ordered a box of kukuru takoyaki. It's medium-sized, it's got 8 balls of awesomeness for only 870 yen plus tax. Mm. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yum, yum, yum. Mm. We want some more. Next thing I had was the king cheese 10 yen bread. There was quite a line when we got there. I've seen this in videos but I was surprised to learn that it actually costs 500 yen per piece. I wasn't expecting that at all. But it tastes really good and cheesy and it makes you feel a bit full after eating the whole thing.
So we decided to roam around some more. We went back to familiar places. It wasn't too crowded that time compared to my first and second time there. Then we reached the famous bridge where we took some photos featuring the iconic Glico Man billboard. We waved at some random travelers taking the cruise and we would shout, Welcome to Japan! We then checked out some other street food. Some still sell Kobe beef or Wagyu beef as street barbecues, which are really awesome but quite expensive for me. Then we had Hitri chicken for 600 yen only. It's got different flavors and they offer other kinds of snacks as well for relatively good prices. Or maybe I just love chicken. <laughs> Just literally next to Hitri Chicken was an Odin stall. I'm not honestly f a fan of Odin, but it was indeed good for winter nights like that. Then, we thought of drinking soju to help us feel warmer. But, Gail's New Year's resolutions include no alcohol for 2024. So, I ended up having lemon sour instead. We continued walking around and checked out the different restaurants and food stalls around Dottenbori. Aside from what we had, here are some of the food places that you might want to check out. I've included a link in the description box where you can get the location for each of the shops. There's a lot of food choices in Dotenbori and it can sometimes be overwhelming to choose among a plethora of awesome choices. So here are some of my recommendations that you might want to try. The first one is for crab lovers. Forget neon lights, let's get crabby in Dotenbori. Kanidoraku is not just a restaurant, it's a giant crabby landmark. Imagine a crab billboard bigger than your dreams, beckoning you to a feast fit for a king or a queen. Dive into fresh, melt-in-your-mouth crab, boiled, grilled, sashimi, you name it. Wanna get fancy? Kaninabe Hot Pot will warm your soul with rich broth and mountains of crustacean goodness. It is a Dotenbori must-try, but be warned, your wallet might need a shell liberation later. Next is Dotenbori Mitsuru, also known as Charcoal Fire Grilled Meat Mitsuru. It's a popular yakiniku or grilled meat restaurant in the heart of Dotenbori. It's known for its high-quality A5 grade kuroge wagyu beef, delicious charcoal grilling, and lively atmosphere. And since Mitsuru is a premium restaurant, so expect higher prices compared to other yakiniku options. Next one is my favorite. Forget boring bowls. Kokoro's got the OG Osaka street food on fire. Giant octopus surprise in every bite at Dotenbori's iconic red octopus stall. Wanna be a takoyaki master? Kokoro's museum lets you whip up your own and learn secrets from the pros. Eat, learn, and be merry. Kokoro's got your Dotenbori cravings covered. Tucked away on a side street, Ganko Zushi boasts a traditional Japanese atmosphere with warm wooden interiors and tatami seating. No flashing signs or gimmicks, just good vibes and good food. They prioritize fresh, seasonal ingredients, offering a wider variety than just sushi. Think sashimi platters, tempura, hot pots, and even Japanese-styled grilled meats. All at super reasonable prices, making it a great spot for budget-conscious travelers. Then there's Tsuruhashi Fugetsu that has been perfecting the art of okonomiyaki for over 60 years, making them true masters of the savory pancake. Their batter is light and fluffy, the ingredients fresh and flavorful, and the cooking skills top-notch. If you're a visual learner, opt for the teppanyaki tables and watch the chefs work their magic right in front of you. It's a mesmerizing experience that adds to the dining fun. 
If you're craving all-you-can-eat grilled meat, Gyukaku delivers. With various course options, you can feast on a variety of meats from classic cuts to kalbi to more adventurous options like wagyu and tong. Their menu also includes plenty of vegetarian and seafood options like grilled vegetables, tofu, and even kimchi pancakes. It is recommended that you make reservations especially on weekends and holidays. Next, Dotenbori Kamukura is a popular chain of ramen restaurants in Japan, known for its rich and flavorful soup made with pork bones and chicken. The star of the show is the original soup, a creamy and milky concoction that simmered for hours with pork bones, chicken, and vegetables. It's rich, savory, and satisfying, perfect for a cold day or a hearty meal. Next is Osaka Osho, translating to the King of Gyoza in Osaka, lives up to its name with its signature dish. Their gyoza boasts a perfect blend of juicy pork and cabbage filling wrapped in a thin, crispy wonton wrapper. They are pan-fried to perfection, creating a delightful contrast of textures in every bite. Jankara Yokucho is a must-visit for anyone looking for a fun and authentic Dotenbori experience. It isn't just about karaoke, it's also a haven for food and drinks. Each bar typically offers a small menu of classic izakaya fare like yakitori, gyoza, and okonomiyaki, perfect for sharing with friends. And of course, you can't forget the beer or sake to wash it all down. Next is Dotenbori Imai, serving up comfort bowls of udon for over 75 years. Their golden dashi broth, simmered with kelp and bonito flakes, is the soul of their dishes, delivering a rich and umami-packed flavor in every slurp. Their signature dish is the kitsune udon, featuring two fried tofu pouches, soaking up to the savory dashi. Aside from those, there's a lot of other food choices in Dotenbori. Try to visit the official Dotenbori page for more info. Thank you for watching!